Hey, y'all, and welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I'm your host, Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Nicole Stanfield. First and foremost, I want to thank you so much for tuning back in and supporting the mission here um, of GEMS Podcast. And let me tell you a little bit about Nicole before we dive in, y'all. She is definitely a firecracker. If y'all could have heard us cracking up in the green room, it would have been amazing. But since 2014, Nicole has owned her own business and worked to improve herself through personal development. After personally experiencing burnout, she now helps successful entrepreneurs who struggle to take time away from their business to create a sustainable work-life balance. You can learn more about her at www.myintuitioncoach.com. But we're going to jump into learning more about Nicole's burnt out, burnout story and how she has accomplished all of the amount of things in such a short time because since 2014 to now like that's a that's a short time it's not super long so she is definitely a rock star but let's bring her on welcome Nicole Stanfield thank you so much for having me I'm really excited to be here and have this conversation and share and have some transparency around burnout and what that looks like Yes, Nicole, and I'm super excited to be having this conversation with you because burnout is real and so many people are dealing with burnout and they may not necessarily have the support or the community to help them climb out of that dark wormhole. But before we jump in, I want to give you two options here. So we could either play a rapid fire game or we could break the ice up front. What would you like to do? Let's play a rapid fire game. Ooh, you want to play now or at the end? Um, let's do it now. Okay, awesome. So question numero uno, favorite color? Red. Oh, yep. Your glasses, your necklace. (laughs) Two, if you could go anywhere in the world and money was no option, but here's a caveat, you may not be able to make it back home. Where would that be? Buenos Aires. Oh, Argentina. Three, favorite food? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Or if you could recreate your wedding day, what would you change, if any? How about my grandpa there? Oh, okay. Five, dream car. <laughs> um, a convertible. <laughs> any convertible? Yeah, I, I don't have like a specific one. I mean, like, okay, if we're being really um adulting I guess then I would want like a Subaru that's a hybrid that's like ninety thousand dollars right now but that's not really very fun or sexy so we're gonna go with convertible (laughs) nice six if you could teleport and go back into time would you change anything in your past Nope. Oh, okay. Good answer. Uh, Because so many people would change different things, but I'm like, if you change your past, you're also changing history because things aren't going to be the same. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Seven favorite movie. Pride and Prejudice. (laughs) Eight. If If no one was watching and you were in your car or bathroom jamming out to music, what are you listening to? It would be swing music or bottom dancing music or like Sway from the Pussycat Dolls or um, there's some other ones that are lots of like there's some Megan Trainor ones that are super fun to dance to. All about that bass. <laughs> I like that song. Yeah. Nine. Okay. Let me me think of a good one here. Ooh. Okay. I got it. So say that you were on an exotic island and you only had a few dollars left to your name. What would you buy? Books. (laughs) Books. Okay. And then 10. You could pass or play. So if you play, you 
I can ask you one more question. If you pass, you could ask me a question that you're eager to know about me. Let's see, is she gonna pass or play y'all? Um, let's do pass. Okay, what do you wanna ask me? I wanna know what is one thing from doing all of your podcasts that you want your audience to remember that you wish that they knew something that's really powerful and speaks to your heart. So a lot of people uh, may not know that my podcast was actually birthed out of a grief journey. So if you dial back to the very beginning, I did a bunch of solo episodes and it was just me talking into the mic about dealing with grief because I lost my father in November of 2020. And that is when the podcast was birthed. And since then, I've transitioned to do both now solo and interview style episodes with the mission of just dropping gems because I believe whether I'm sharing something or my guests are sharing something, we all have incredible gems to share. And that's the reason about gems because in order to have a beautiful gemstone, it has to go through the pressures. Yeah. 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 Sometimes (laughs) the pressure sucks. (laughs) <laughs> yes, but it's necessary to get us to where we want, even though we don't like going through the sucking process. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So let's jump into your story, Nicole. Like, what made you burn out? And was it mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual, or maybe even finan- financial? That could cause people to burn out as well. Right. So many things. So we all have kind of experienced some level of burnout with finals week and school or your parents after the holidays, you're done, right? You need some space. (laughs) And so a lot of times that is an opportunity. um, And we're kind of all familiar with that level of burnout. What I experienced was almost a level of burnout that was almost like shut down, where it was like, I couldn't do anything. And it was mental, physical, emotional. Um, it definitely had a big financial impact. And that's something I'm, I'll am i share what it looked like for me. So that then if you're hearing my story and you're nodding your head or you're like, oh my gosh, that's me. There are things that you can do. It doesn't have to be this really big, scary monster that we don't want to talk about and that hides under the bed. It can be something that is, uh, okay, maybe I'm there. How can I add some more balance to my life? So when I burned out in 2018, I was the, some of the things that showed up for me that I didn't even know were tied to burnout. Uh, I would be in a zoom meeting and at the end of it, I would have, I would just be so angry about something. I would have to rage and be frustrated and sometimes yell and just be like, ah, I hate this and this and this. And I'm so frustrated with all these things. And then I would get a client email because I run my own business and I would, they would be needy and it would just drive me crazy and I wouldn't want to open them. And I would want to avoid that email and opening it and just dealing with my inbox and it was overflowing and it was like too much. And I would complete a big project. And instead of feeling proud or excited, I would be really frustrated and I would say, Oh, well the client won't like it or they won't be satisfied with it or they'll want something to change. And I would go into meetings and I would sit there and I was, I had a digital marketing business and I would sit there and and it's really important as a digital marketer to have lots of ideas and solutions and be creative. And I had nothing. My creativity was gone. It was zero, nothing left to give. I had no energy. I had no solutions. I just basically sat there and was like, I hope no one calls on me or asks me for anything because I don't have anything to give. And I would get to my weekend and I would feel like I was recovering from being sick and I wasn't sick, but I just felt so low in my energy. Like I was recovering from sickness and it happened every weekend. And I just, I didn't care about getting groceries or cleaning the house or doing any of those adulting things. I mean, sometimes still, I don't care about that stuff, but normally I can like motivate myself to do it. (laughs) And these were all things that were showing up for me around and I had no idea what was going on. I was like, why am I so bored? 
why am I only able to work 15 minutes and then I'm taking an hour long break and it just keeps going and going. And when you're working hourly, not really the best way to make money. <laughs> If you're only working for 15 minutes. And what ended up happening is that I was like, something needs to change. I need to do something. I need to fix this. So absolutely. I decided I would fix it by taking a one week break. After not taking a break for four years, one week was really going to fix everything. (laughs) And I laugh because looking back it, it was the beginning of me shifting, but it, I, that week I didn't really do anything. I just sat on my couch and I just read books and tried to remember that I needed to change my clothes and take a shower and feed the dogs. And it, it sounds really like that was a very low level. Oh, wait, Nicole, you're, you're muted out. Hold on one second, Nicole. So, yeah. So I got to the point where I just, uh, I was really worried. Uh, My energy was very low. And so I was like, am I depressed? What is going on with me? And my husband is a teacher and he was taking a course on burnout. And he was, he asked me some questions. Uh Uh-oh, we lost you again. So my husband was taking this course and he asked me, did you know that a sign of burnout is being angry or not having creativity? And I was like, no, I had no idea. So then I started on this whole process and I self-diagnosed myself that I and did tests as some stress tests and read a book, a few books and realized that I was experiencing burnout. Uh-oh. So, okay, there you go. So you were experiencing so I, burnout. So I, I, got, I got to a point where I had to figure out what I was going to do. And unfortunately, I had to start releasing things that weren't serving me, that were toxic in my life. And one of those was um, one of my largest clients, unfortunately. And that was so hard because I was really holding on to that money. I really wanted that money. And I had to do a lot of work to realize that that wasn't a good fit. And I tried different things and I tried to do different positions and stuff and it it just wasn't working. And so I walked away from about $20,000. Wow. But then it goes to also show like all money is not good money. If it's costing you your mental health, that stability, if it's draining you, if you're feeling fatigue, and you know something just deep down inside of you is telling you like, alert, alert, like it's not a good fit, but the money is so good that it makes people like overlook what what some of those values are because they're like, ooh, this money is really good. I could go buy this, this, and this. But then you have to come back and realize that your mental stability, your overall wellness is important. And you really have to have that alignment. So I like the fact that your husband recognized that something was off balance. And he said, Hey, I'm taking this burnout course. Um, Did you know? And he started with a, did you know, question versus a judgment question and pointing the fingers because how many times have we gone through life and people have pointed the fingers and we, as human beings, well, let me say me, I'll use me. That will cause me to shut down in a minute because who are you to, you know, throw the blame or, um, pass judgment on me whenever you may not even know what's going on internally or in my world, you know? Absolutely. So through a combination of learning things through his course, through him, as well as I did work with a therapist so that I could make sure I wasn't experiencing depression because that was a concern about how low I got and I wasn't. And if you're listening to this and you're like, I think that I might be experiencing depression, there are really simple, easy ways to get support online. And the, and the pandemic obviously did not help with our mental health and our physical health and all the stresses that we've had since that has happened. But there are things that 
we get to share in the stories that we're telling each other about our experiences. So then we can grow and we can move forward. So the really important thing that I want everybody to hear is that you don't have to sacrifice your needs in order to be successful. I feel like sometimes we get to a point where we feel like we, in order to be successful, you almost need to be in burnout. We go up to each other and we say, oh my gosh, Genesis, I'm so tired and I'm exhausted and I'm burning out. However, I landed a 10K client, so it's okay. Mm-hmm. And you, what would you say? I would say, oh, that's great. But if you're feeling burnt, burnt out, then you need to take a step back and dial it back. That's what I would say if someone told me that they were that they were feeling burnt out or if I went to them and told them that I was feeling burnt out, I would want them to focus on the fact that I was burnt out and help me like look for ways to mitigate that versus being like, oh yeah, girl, that's awesome. 10K, ooh, secure the bag, okay. What, let's go out to celebrate because then you miss the whole emotional piece. <laughs> Absolutely. And if we go up to each other and we say, oh my gosh, I got great sleep last night and I feel really fulfilled and I my cup is super full. People will be like, I don't really know what to say to you. <laughs> yeah, or they'll be like, what are you doing? Like, oh my gosh, give me, give me the secret sauce because- how many people want to feel fulfilled and they want to feel like they had a great night's sleep and they're rested because there are people who have sleep and they get enough sleep, but they still feel tired. And it's because something is off and we really need to pay attention to our body. Are we listening to our body? Because if you don't address certain things, it's going to take a toll on you later on in life versus if you would take action on it now. So we really have to be intentional. And you talk about this too in some of your other talks is saying no without feeling guilty for saying no. And when you, when I hear the word no, I think it's a way that someone is using boundaries in place because I'm saying no because it's something that I don't want to do. I'm not interested in, in it or I'm just respecting my time and I cannot put more on my plate than I can bear. But let me know. What was it like for you to really start saying no to certain things, even though maybe it was like saying no to those big clients? Yeah, I said no to clients. I said no to family. I took all my commitments that I had for like that week and I just, I said no to all of them. And then I slowly brought them back in to my life as I was like, after I'm done with this commitment, do I feel good? Do I have good energy or do I have low energy? And if I had low energy, I found a way to let it go. And I was really, yeah, I was really tried to be very hard line about that. And I still try to make sure that the things that I'm doing and the things that I'm putting my energy into are, is this giving me energy or is this taking my energy away? And the things that take my energy away, I try to shift them or make it look different or do it in a different way. Because I feel like one reason why I burned out is because I stopped listening to myself. I stopped listening to my needs mentally, physically, emotionally. I was just trying to push through. I was just trying to do more. And I was just trying to get to a point where I could, I thought that there was this part where all of a sudden I would have all the things I was working towards. But in the end, the process of getting there was taking me away from everything I wanted. And I needed to shift that. I needed to shift the paradigm that said I had to sacrifice myself and my needs in order to accomplish these goals. And so I love that you talked about the listening to yourself, listening to your body. That's part of where my intuition coaching comes from is saying, hey, we need to pay attention to this thing that we have, because if you don't take care of yourself, no one else can. That's on you. And people have to realize that early on and saying no, like at that moment is just, you know, for that moment, things could change as soon as your life changes and you work through some of the things that you're dealing with, but you cannot sacrifice your morals and your values and your time constraints at the appeasement of other people who wouldn't do the same in return for you. So I say, let your no be no and let your yes be yes. Because when somebody says no to you, 
they mean their no and they're not going to change it. So why do they expect you to change your no to, you know, compliment or compensate them? It's a two way street. Yes. I feel like if we shifted the paradigm around saying no and made it whenever I say no, that means I'm putting my needs first. I am important. I'm taking care of myself. And if you think that, then maybe it makes that no easier of saying, I need to do this for myself, going to another event, going and doing another thing. One, I don't have the energy for it. And I'm acknowledging that and that's okay. And I need to take this time for me. Absolutely. I say self-care and self-awareness is the best care and no one else is going to do that. And let's put an example in place for the listeners and viewers. If you think about the airplane and whenever they are doing the safety message, they tell you to put on your own mask first before you could assist others. So if you don't have enough oxygen, you're not going to be able to help your loved one that may be sitting next to you or that stranger that may need help. So why not focus on you? And once you get you right, then you can lend out yourself externally. So I always like to tell people, because I come from a religious and spiritual background, I say, I have to get the vertical right. And once I get my vertical right, then everything else will line up horizontally. Oh, I like that. That's very creative. Amazing. So let's um, spend a little bit of time talking about some of the boundaries, because being a coach and being in business for yourself, you have to set up a lot of boundaries. You have to set up boundaries with your clients. You have to set up boundaries with your family members. And then most importantly, you have to set up boundaries for yourself to have that accountability factor, meaning am I um, making sure that I'm sticking to my calendar? Am I on time? Am I walking it like I'm talking it? Do my actions align up with my words? Am I a fraud? Or is there something that I need to do personally or professionally to see that overall development? And I think that's a part of boundaries because there's different levels to it. Absolutely. Boundaries sometimes we feel like are this hard line in the sand. And I feel like they get to be flexible And it's you saying, this is what I don't want. And this is what I do want. So the boundary of you're saying, I'm not going to do that thing anymore is saying, I don't want to give my energy to it anymore, which is fine. And I do want to give my energy someplace else. For example, a lot of times, especially with working from home, whether you're an entrepreneur or you have a boss, there's this expectation that you're going to answer emails at five, six, seven, eight, nine that your phone is going to be on all night, right? And that you're going to be available all the time. And I don't think that's healthy. I want to challenge that it can look different. I think that you can have that conversation, whether you're self-employed with your clients or whether you work with a boss and saying like, these, there's time that I need to have this downtime and it's essential for me to recoup. So then I can come back the next day and be effective and productive and get all the things done. So if there's a, a, a place where you say, I still need to, what if there's an emergency that happens, or I still need to be available for these people, my boss or my clients, then you can do something like have a a system so that in the subject line, if it says urgent, then you know, you're going to answer that. So you can quickly look at your emails and glance at them and say, within a couple of seconds, right before you go to bed or something like that, if you have to, then you can say, absolutely, this is urgent. I have to respond to it. Otherwise, you won't get stuck into answering all of your emails. And then you're delaying going to bed. You're delaying those other boundaries. A lot of times when we work from home, the boundaries between where you work and where you have family time can get really blurred. So it's important to try to not work uh, the computer, excuse me, the computer that you work on, try to not use that computer when you're doing like family time try to use a different device if you can if you can leave the space where you do your work and go to a different room to have family time so then you can have some physical boundaries between where you work and where you have family time downtime whatever that looks like for you so then it doesn't become this 
like there's no line and it just meshes all together. And then you're working all the time and there's no downtime. Absolutely. And what you just described there is also part of a balance component. So you could balance your home and work life just by, you know, setting those healthy boundaries, because I like people to see it as healthy boundaries versus boundaries that are just another thing for them to check off their list or a box, because people get bored of checking boxes and over time it doesn't work. But if you see it as a lifestyle, if you see it as a way to balance and a way for you to just really have that accountability factor for yourself, as well as the other people who are coming into your world, then it gives you that overall balance. And as we begin to wind down, Nicole, I know you talk about there is a way that you could have that work in work as well as home life balance um, by adding 30 minutes a day into your schedule. So how can you add those 30 minutes a day into your schedule without sacrificing something that you really need to be accountable to? I love this question. So if this is going to sound very simple, so if you're listening, you're like, what? Just stick with me. There's this thing and it's a recurring event that happens every day and it's called lunch. And a lot of us forget about it, right? And a lot of us, I mean, I was this person, so don't hear me say that I'm perfect, but I was this person and I would sit and I, I would forget about lunch because I was working or because I needed to get the project done or a client would call during my lunchtime and I would take it. And when we eat lunch at our desks, when we don't eat lunch, when we skip lunch, because there's something more important, we're not taking the time to give our brain a break, to physically take a break, to go outside, to take a walk, whatever that looks like for you. But when you come back, you'll be more energized, you'll be more productive, you'll be more engaged with what you're working on. And so what I encourage people to do is to go into their phones and to create a recurring event called lunch. Yeah. And you don't have to take it every day at the same time. That's it doesn't have to look, it doesn't have to be this rigid rule that we're creating, but it's an expectation. So maybe today you can take it. And maybe it's just a reminder that you want to take it or you're going to take it in an hour. But if you're working towards this is where I want to be, where every day I'm taking a lunch, I'm taking a break, whether you eat on it or not, it doesn't matter. It's the time that you're taking away from doing the work. Small breaks really help your brain and they give you also that mental time to take a breather, to do something different, to engage with other people, whatever that looks like for you. So It's really simple and don't look past the very simple, simple tip that it is. And you can apply it really easily to your current schedule. Yes, I love the lunch um, thing that you just mentioned, Nicole. And one of the other things I want to add to that component is whenever you are eating lunch, try to get um, distractions out of your way so you could really practice mindfulness and you could chew your food. You could allow it to be savory. You could um, let it satiate you and et cetera, because sometimes people eat on the go. And if you're constantly eating on the go, you're not allowing your body to kind of take up, take a break in order to recharge and rejuvenate because all it all it sees and all it hears is go, 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 go. And it's firing on all cylinders. And before you know it, you're going to hit that roadblock, which is burnout. So I would definitely encourage you to think about that. And then another 30 minute thing that I would encourage you to build in um, is a nap, a 30 minute nap. You'll be surprised on how a nap could be super beneficial. And if you look at some of the big companies, I'm not a brand sponsor for Google, but Google has nap pods. And there's a reason why they have nap nap pods. Naps are the best. They're the bomb. As a kid, like they were okay, whatever. But a nap as an adult can help me shift, help me rejuvenate, help me as something that I'm stuck on. I can take a nap and I can come back to it and I actually care about it again or I can work through it, or I see a different solution that I didn't see previously. So I love that suggestion. Naps are so important. Amazing. And as we begin to wind down the whole, because we gave them a lot of meat and potatoes for this segment, I want you to leave them with your call to action for this segment. What do you want to challenge them to do 
and what is their action step after hearing about burnout, hearing how you overcame burnout, building in 30 minutes of their day, whether it's um, having that lunch reoccurring meeting, taking a nap, and then also setting up those boundaries. So if you're listening to this and you're like, I think that could be me and I want to know more, if you go to myintuitioncoach.com forward slash balance quiz, I have a really quick quiz there. It's about two minutes long. It kind of gives you a gauge of where's my balance at right now? Where would I like it to be? How do I want it to be different? What can I shift? And it's an opportunity for you to think about some things that maybe you haven't thought about in a while, or maybe you haven't thought about ever. So that's an opportunity to kind of get started and to see what it looks like for you. So then you can take additional steps. And at the end of that quiz, I provide additional resources so that if you want to take the next step, then you have the opportunity to. Amazing. So go take that quiz, y'all. And then Nicole, how can they connect with you on social media? Where do you primarily hang out? Primarily, it's it's LinkedIn. So that's Nicole Stanfield. It's not so fun or flashy. Um, I do have uh, profiles on Instagram and Facebook, but primarily it's it's LinkedIn. Amazing. Do you want to just drop any of those um, for Instagram or Facebook, or you just prefer to drive all the traffic to your website and LinkedIn? Website is perfect. Yep. So that's where you can get the most insight into who I am and how we could work together and what that looks like and what I do. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of GEMS Podcast. You just heard Nicole Stanfield. We covered burnout. We covered boundaries getting in 30 minutes of your day, whether it's a nap or lunch uninterrupted and really practicing that mindfulness. And then we also um, encourage just having a conversation about it, doing the internal work so you can be where you want externally and really live life optimally. So I want to encourage you to connect with Nicole. All of her contact information will be in the show notes down below. So just scroll, scroll, scroll and read. And then make sure you subscribe and share this segment. We're on 40 plus platforms. Connect with us over at YouTube, which is Gems with Genesis and Mars Kemp. For all you video content lovers, you can see all our mannerisms and body language. And then lastly, but not least, y'all, we are looking for brand sponsors for Gems Podcast, where the mission is to educate, inspire, and motivate while we connect the dots for diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, because it takes all of us intersecting and coming together to really drive the mission forward and make this world a better place. So you can find out more by heading on over to my website, which is genesisamariskemp.net. And you'll also see that we are ranked in the top 3% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts for www.listennotes.com. So definitely a lot of value added. So until next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Be an asset, not a liability. And go take that quiz with Nicole so you could understand where you are because we don't want you to hit burnout and be struggling on the struggle bus to come out of it.